Hi, Matt. Hey, Dan. How you doing? I'm doing good. Uh, we obviously haven't seen a lot of it uh, these first two days, but when you think of Justin's deep ball ability, how do you describe what you've seen on tape and, and, and what did it look like that when you've seen him throw in person as well? Yeah, so on tape, I think it's one of his greatest strengths that he has is uh, being able to have that accurate deep ball. Uh, he's thrown several of them. And then when we went to the uh, to his pro day, um, it was it was it was funny because, you know, we were there standing back there with uh, with Coach Day and, and, and Kyle was back there, too. And it was his second pro day and uh, he was back there. And right before, you know, uh, Ryan had predicted, he said, watch when this uh, this next deep ball comes up right here. And what do you know? He got the ball from gun. He rolled out to the right and just let one go. And you could just feel it. So. I think that's one of his uh, better things that he does. Uh, and, and that's something that we want to be able to, to use as much as possible. Ideally, what does that unlock for an entire offense when you have a guy that can not only throw those, but connect on those consistently? Sure. Yeah, it's uh, well, I think we all would say that when you're when you're able to, no matter who it is, when you can hit those big plays and you're staying away from, um, you know, <laughs> All you know, if you have some drives where you have to end up having 15, 16, seven play drive, 17 play drives, it can, um, you know, it puts a lot of pressure on third down and it puts a lot of pressure when you get in the red zone. But when you have those deep, those deep type of plays and those deep balls and, and it's a, those quick strikes, uh, you eliminate third downs and you eliminate that red zone and it's, uh, it's six points as well. So it obviously helps out. Up. Hey, Matt, I hope everybody's feeling well. Um, Thanks, Bob. I, it's really hard looking at these kids. I mean, Jenkins and Borum, they look great in their uniforms, but until they actually play an exhibition game, until you're actually live, it, it's hard to know how much you're going to have there. So what, what are you looking for? What do you have to see to know if you're going to be comfortable with one or two of these kids playing very early this year? Sure, I think that for really all of these guys, the benefit that we'll have this year that we did not have last year is going to be having those preseason games to know that we'll at least get to see them out there for a little bit with, with um, you know, full speed, real live, quote unquote, bullets. Um, we did not have that last year, and that can be hard for some of these guys. But this year, what we got to do is really make sure that we're teaching them the techniques and fundamentals that we teach so that they can take that into the offseason and practice their techniques without pads for OTAs and, and, and the offseason program. And then when we get to training camp, it is going to be uh, it's going to be how fast can they get used to seeing, for instance, those tackles, um, Khalil Mack and Robert Quinn and these other guys coming off the edge. And what better way to try to evaluate yourself? So um, we're going to have to be able to see what they can do in those preseason games, but also be prepared that. Uh, and let them understand that, you know, we want everybody competing to be a starter. And uh, that's that's going to be obviously their mindset. Is there a, is there a depth chart at left tackle right now? No, I wouldn't say right now with the depth charts. Uh, we have an idea of a direction hub, you know, that, that we think we want to go. But again, there's so many things that are fluid and that can change based off of what we see. And I think that's probably why, you know, why we don't go that route right now. Thanks, Matt. Yep. Pat? Matt, yesterday you were talking about how Justin was serious on the field yesterday. Have you been around quarterbacks who have been like that? What, uh, is there anything you can compare it to? And secondly, are you still planning on being out there tomorrow? Yeah, so to your second question, um, I am planning on being out there. Uh, um, Got to get uh, one more negative test in, in the morning tomorrow, which I'm ready for, and, and then I can rock and roll. So I'm, I'm excited to get back out there. Uh, and then as far as other quarterbacks, yeah, there's there's definitely other quarterbacks that have that same demeanor. And I think that's the beauty of what makes everybody different at their positions and how they handle themselves, whether it's uh, between those white lines or or it's amazing too how people change when they're off the field versus when they're on the field. So we just want them to be who they are and his competitive nature and his competitive spirit. You can tell um you know, is, is the way that it is. It's kind of always been that way. I think you see that with him and uh, that's something that we'll all get used to. Mark. Hey, Matt, uh, I think it's Ryan Pace who said he likes the rookie minicamp because he gets a chance to see in the flesh, the players he'd been scouting 
you know, in film or in pro days, all, all this time. How much are you missing that? And, and even regarding that, with, uh, with regard to that, is there anything you've seen yourself uh, from home or you feedback you've gotten from coaches that tells you that some of these guys or any of these guys are maybe even more than what you thought? Sure. It's a little different. Um, it's a lot different when you're not there in person. Uh, you can still see the video. You can still kind of get a feel of what the tempo is like. Um, then you can hear the play calls, et cetera. Uh, but it is different than other years where for, my, for myself of being able to kind of have those one-on-one -on -one conversations with guys as maybe they're stretching or as they're running on or off the field. So that part I've missed out on the past two days, but listening to the other coaches, I think, you know, this evening we're going to get together and go through uh, as a staff, the, the guys that we're seeing and, and what we see, we think we might have. It's always the beauty of these camps is being able to see, you know, whether it's a, a drafted guy, but a lot of times an undrafted guy that might grab your attention and, and be somebody that you want to keep on the team and move forward with. Um, that's always what's fun about this as well. So uh, it's been different for me, but I'm looking forward to, you know, relying on the coaches as what they're seeing. And uh, I think that the, I want to give credit to our players out there, there and the coaches. You know, I think that it's been a clean two days. There's, n there's not guys flying around on the ground everywhere. They understand the rules. They're tagging off on defense like they're supposed to. We're, we're not having the domino effect with the O-line, D-line, with guys falling to the ground. Um, so, so far, it's been really good. Thank you. Yep. Brad? Hey, Matt, what, what's realistic for Justin when you talk about retention and, and kind of how he's able to handle everything you guys throw at him over a weekend like this when when you get back with him or, or you know, when the veterans are there and, and he's asked to kind of build off his, his beginning here? Yeah, I would say his retention, what's going to happen, Brad, is yesterday being the first day that he's on the field and being able to just get in the huddle, uh, hear the play call in a headset in his helmet, walk up to the line of scrimmage, visualize the play that's being called, and then um, executing. That, that's, that's hard for that first day. I think you could even see it and feel it today. Is, um, his, it felt like just that part was, was even better from yesterday. I thought we had a, little, a few more mistakes today, um, just from what I saw um, on, on the, on the uh, video, which is normal on the second day because we install more plays this morning. So there's more volume for the guys, to, which creates more thinking, which usually creates more mistakes. So it probably looked a little more sloppy today than yesterday, which is okay and very normal. But retention for him is we were talking late last night about what it means to when you call a play and you walk in that huddle, are you speaking to the guys in the huddle or are you just reading a play? Because when you get in there and you have voice inflection and you're talking to the Z receiver and telling him his route, you're talking to the line and talking about their protection. You're talking to the zebra receiver and talking about motions. And then you, by the way, you break the huddle and got to look at the play clock. Are you doing all that together? And so every day that he gets out there, it'll get better and better as he starts to really learn the intricacies of this offense. Jason. Matt, you guys had a rookie come in last year and Darnell Mooney and play right away and find a role in the offense. What indicators are you looking for from Daz Newsom that would tell you whether or not he's capable of that? Sure. I would say again with Daz, um, you know, I, I think, First of all, his personality, I love. I think he's got a great personality, and, and I haven't really been there in person at all, but just from what I see on these Zoom calls, and I know it's his birthday today, but uh, what he's done in his production in North Carolina and, and playing at that slot position, um, it's going to just be about taking advantage of opportunities. Right now, these guys, they're, they're the, uh, the big fish in the small pond, like I said yesterday, with, with the only rookies being here, really, so they're getting all the reps. When the vets come in, they, they start losing out to physical reps, and now it's more about mental reps. So it's a matter of can guys stay in tune with their, their mental reps, and then when they get a chance for physical reps, can they take advantage? And that's going to be the same thing for, for Daz Newsom. When you talk about Daz, you, you understand, I mean, that, that's a position that he plays where uh, we feel like it's probably some of the, the, the most depth that we have at a position, and he's just going to add to that. You know, I mean, he's going to come in to OTAs to the offseason, to training camp 
And you're looking at guys like, you know, A-Rob, Mooney, Goodwin, Wims, you got um, Ridley and Bird, among others, A. Miller. Like, so when you talk about Anthony and that, that, that talks about the depth too, that, um, that we have, I think that, you know, that's awesome. And that's what we want. And I, I, I know the other day there was something that was said uh, in regards to coach furry with um, we don't need you, you know, talking with the whole Anthony Miller thing, but, you know, Mike and I talked about that and that, that wasn't what Mike was trying to, to say about Anthony Miller, you know, that his message was about the depth that we have at that position and that, you know, all of those guys, including Anthony Miller, this is the most competition we've had. And, and that goes with Daz Newsom, man, everybody that comes in for wide receiver, man, it's going to be awesome to see, the competition. So, um, it's, it's, uh, uh, you know, Anthony included, he's, he, we've had some great talks. He's super mo motivated to have a, a great off season and training camp and control what he can control. But I know that that was kind of a big deal the other day. And I just wanted to kind of clear that up and, and say that Anthony's been doing a hell of a job and he's going to compete with the rest of these guys, including Daz Newsom. Dan. Matt, one of the questions that some evaluators had about Justin coming out was his ability to get through progressions, not necessarily from a, a standpoint of being able to see it, but being able to do it quickly enough. I'm curious what your evaluation on that is and, and what growth you need to see in that area going forward. So number one, I would say I saw it change over time at Ohio State. Um, and that's what I was excited about. I think we all saw it when we watched tape. Uh, the, the first um, season that he played, you could see there were some times where he's working through progressions and then credit to Coach Day and that coaching staff to teaching him and having him grow with reading that. Justin's a very bright kid. He's football smart. Uh, he understands X's and O's. And then he, un he also does a great job at, at understanding post-snap vision. And that's so crucial in this game is being able to recognize that. And he did it yesterday. Again, he did it today. Um, so for him to have that is going to be really, really big to be able to grow, um, again, especially against the defenses that, that we're going to see, uh, even in training camp as well. To, to that end, his season last year was different. It was, you know, abbreviated, it was interrupted. There were a lot of curveballs to it, but how valuable was it to his growth to have, even though it was only eight games to have those eight games to improve on all that? Absolutely huge. You know, I, it really, it's, it's to get those snaps that he had and be able to, to see, you know, every play that he got where he got to see another defense or he got to be able to throw another deep cross concept or some type of uh, post route or uh, make some checks at the line of scrimmage. And it just, it, it's so valuable to have that experience, to be able to use that as you grow. So you, it, let alone speaking about the person and him leading leading that thing during COVID and trying to get everybody to get out there and play it just shows to his competitive spirit. So I think that's really going to help him to be able to, to, to um, that, that learning curve that he could have that him playing last year is going to help with that learning curve this year. Got time for a couple more Adam Hogue. Yeah, Matt, I guess this is sort of a follow-up to what Mark asked earlier about getting to see these guys, getting eyes on these guys. Yeah. In general, in your experience as a coach, how important is the first impression and kind of passing that eye test once you finally get them out there on the practice field and get to see them? Yeah, it's real. It's, it's nice to see um, where, when these, what these guys look like. I mean, I've had a couple coaches without giving away too much uh, for other teams down the road or whatever, but I've had a couple coaches call me and tell me, you know, this guy looks better and is playing better than what I thought on tape. And so to your point, Adam, like those are that's those are good things. Uh, it's better to have that than to say this guy doesn't look like what I thought we had on tape, you know, so that's real. And, and now the next step is when um, when the vets get here and you're able to see them get their mental reps. And then when ultimately um, you get to training camp, that's when training camp and preseason. I mean, that's in the end when you really get to see some of those guys. Last one, Pat. I wanted to ask you about Thomas Graham. Is there an opportunity for him as a slot corner? And what jumped out about him uh, when you watched what he was able to do in college? And also, how do you evaluate a guy who then sat out? Of sure. No, I, I absolutely think there's an opportunity for him. Uh, you, can, you guys could see two years ago what type of player he was. We saw it. 
um, really, really talented, uh, did sit out this year. Um, so uh, again, for anybody that, that didn't play, um, we want to make sure that they come in and, and, um, and, and are able to, to really learn Sean's system on defense and then let Sean and those guys and Deshae really figure out what's best for him, whether it's in the slot at nickel or outside a corner or both, and then what they can handle mentally. You know, Sean, Sean does a great job. I know that's coached the size of uh, Forte is the nickel position, so I know they're going to get coached well with, between him and Deshae, uh, Deshae being a nickel as well. So um, – it's really going to be just to what can he handle mentally and then competition, man. Let's, let's let those guys go out there and see what they can do against our guys in the slot. I think we're all set. Thanks coach. All right. Take care guys. See you.